All right, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us in person and on Facebook Live for what is going to be a very exciting and educational afternoon. Uh, today we are going to be doing or seeing a live role play of a listing presentation, and the session today is led by Colleen Miklas. Colleen is a current member of our Agent Leadership Council and the Rainmaker for the Colleen Miklas team. Um, she has an impressive resume uh, going back to 2004 when she got into the industry and just recently crossed a hundred million dollars in lifetime sales. <laughs> Colleen is a listing specialist and so we are all very lucky to get a peek behind the curtain here as to how she does what she does and leverages listings to build her business. So without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Colleen and her team. Thanks, Mike. So as Mike said, I'm Colleen Nicholas. I've been at Keller Williams for going on three years at the end of this year. I've been uh, started, I've been in real estate for 17 years. Uh, 15 of it was all on my own. So I just started a team two years ago with the help of everybody here. I want to thank everybody today for coming. Um, I hope you can get one thing from my presentation or our presentation today. And if it, uh, it was well worth your time if you could take away that one item. This is how I do my listing presentation, but you need to cater this and make this your own. So like I said, if there's one tip that you can take away from today that was worth your time coming, okay? You're gonna fail a number of times doing listing presentations. It's just the name of the game. You're gonna lose out against other competing agents. You're gonna hear from sellers that maybe your strength wasn't X, marketing, or you, you weren't, you know, I, the, it wasn't a price you heard. I mean, you're gonna hear it all, okay? But I feel that the only way you're gonna get better, like the old saying goes, you gotta to fail to be successful, okay? So as they, all, as, they, as they say, motivation is what gets you started, habit is what keeps you going. So we need to build on those habits, okay? We're gonna start off with a little clip from American Beauty, if you ever saw that movie, and that Benning, and oldie but goodie. She's trying to sell her list. You know. Well, you have some really fun backyard get-togethers out here. Dad says it's full of lagoon-like. There's nothing lagoon-like about it, <laughs> except for maybe the bugs. Not even any plants out here. What do you call this? Is this not a plant? If you have a problem with the plants, I can always call my landscape architect. It's solved. I mean, I think lagoon, I think waterfall, I think tropical. This is a cement hole. Uh, I think this is supposed to be from the garage. <laughs> I love this scene. <laughs> the rest of it's a little dramatic, so we cut it off. But, um, but the point being that there, a lot of this are the challenges that we overcome in selling our listings. Um, the daily obstacles that we overcome. So how we're gonna work today is this. Uh, and you have, you have a uh, folder in front of you about Meet the Team. This is something about our team that we give to all our sellers. Um, I'm at the top, obviously, but this is being the team leader of our Colleen Nicholas team. I have my two buyers agents, Sam and Tina, who are gonna represent Mr. and Mrs. Krieger today, so husband and wife, okay? <laughs> we have, uh, just to introduce other members of our team, Liz Minsky, who is our transaction coordinator. We'll hear more from Liz later. She's gonna be our van of light, and she's gonna be holding a board and walk across the room throughout our live listing presentation because I don't wanna stop the live listing presentation if there's items that I want you to point out. So during those points that I want you to, like the light bulb goes off, she's gonna be your van of light and kind of walk across the room. So you're gonna be watching us, and at the same time, Carrie, this is my social media girl, marketing girl, She's gonna be putting up slides up here. So when we're in the living room, you're gonna have a living room slide up here. Okay, because these are things that you have to be noticing when you're walking through the house. I call it the wandering eye, okay? You take that for what it's worth. But when you're in a room, your wandering eye needs to be started at the ceiling. Are you noticing water spots? Are you the painting uh, in the room? The, the awkward colors that some people have in their, God knows, in the bedrooms or in their house in general. Yeah. Those hideous wallpaper at times that you may have to overcome. But it's gotta be from top to bottom. So you start at the top, you go down, and you and land at the floor. Notice the flooring. Notice how much, I don't wanna say crap, but they got a lot of stuff sometimes in the house. Mm -hmm. How much stuff has to be decluttered and whatnot. 
So use your wandering eye around each room. So as we walk around the room, we're gonna start here in the living room. This is gonna be our front door. You have the dining room, the kitchen, the master bedroom. You have bedroom one and two, bathroom. This is gonna be the basement here. And we're gonna go back to the dining room table where Sam and Tina Krieger are gonna sit and we're gonna do the presentation. Even though the dining room's over there, the dining room table's gonna be here. Okay? <laughs> and then thirdly, we're gonna do Carl's Cuts. Um, just little tips and tricks of the trade to get your head on straight, get your mindset going, and um, we're gonna go deep a little bit into our hearts on how we need to be running our business to get these listings. And then, of course, we'll end it with the question and answer session. Okay, any questions so far about how we're gonna work this? Okay, perfect. And I gave you this handout to take notes, because you always go to meetings sometimes, you don't have your binder or your pen, you have a pen. Um, this is gonna be page one, which we're gonna talk about pre-qualifying the seller. Page two is for you to take notes while we're walking around the house if you want to take notes or if there's something that, you know, hey, I already know all this and I don't need to take it, but at least you have the opportunity. And then anything we do in the closing session. So we have three parts. Again, um, how we pre-qualify the seller. And number two, our live listing presentation and three, the closing. <coughs> okay? So for the purpose of this conversation, um, we got Mr. Krieger has called and left me a message that he wants to sell his house at um, you know, you can talk to me. At uh, in Mayfield Heights, and he's left me a message, and I have to return his call. Okay, what's the first thing you have to do before calling back a seller? Research the home. Hundred percent. Who said that, Debbie? Those are literally my exact words. Research the home. <laughs> okay, you sure you need to be in this class? <laughs> okay. um, all right. So you definitely want to research the home. I call it the research and prep time. Okay, you need to look the house up. You need to know what he bought it for, what's their mortgage on it, is he up to date on their taxes, are there any assessments? You need to know the basic facts of the home according to their tax records um, because when you call him back, this is gonna be beneficial to your conversation, okay? Just make sure you're, you're doing everything, okay? Before you call Mr. Krieger back, we have I work off a pre-qualification form. This is where I'm going to literally ask a litany of questions to the seller, okay? Which half the time, once they talk, because people like to talk about themselves, but half of this will be filled in once you've asked the question. But I wanna have them on the phone and ask them, Mr. Krieger, confirming you have two full bathrooms. Oh, well, well, no, we have three, because we put an extra one up in the addition, da, 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 da. Now the tax records, I'll pick bathrooms, for example, are not always 100% correct. You know that. Mm -hmm. right. But you need to probe them and ask them more. Because they say we need to dig two, three times deeper in the questions. Don't take the surface answer every time. If you consistent, consistently keep your systems in place, you will generate more answers, okay? And you're gonna have to start to decipher the personality types, okay? You gotta pay attention to the details on the phone call. If Mr. Krieger is one that he wants to know what's my bottom line, what's the highest price point, and as we will discuss a little bit, there's the DISC personality test. If you haven't taken it, there's free tests online. I highly suggest that you take this yourself. You need to know who you are because you need to know how to converse with different personalities. Okay, I am a high D, so I can relate to other high Ds. And when I talk to a high S, they drive me a little crazy because they want to tell stories and all this, and I have to kind of retreat and know that that's my personality and I have to gauge that. But how do you relate and who's going to be the decision maker in there? Okay, so you may get a high S, like Mrs. Krieger is gonna to represent today in these rooms, where she's gonna to wanna to talk about the beautiful crown moldings and my beautiful red bedroom and so on and so forth, okay? But it doesn't matter to me inside, but it matters to her, okay? So we have to pull at the heartstrings and just start to decipher those personality types, which you will start to do over the phone, having a conversation, okay? You'll also wanna know their motivation of why they're moving. You know, do they need to sell before they buy? Do they have they already bought a home? These are all questions that are gonna be continued to be asked once you have that uh, conversation with them. Well, my mom's coming in from Arizona and she's gotta move in with us and we gotta buy a new house. Great, has your mom sold her house in Arizona? Ding, 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 light bulb goes off. Do you need a Keller Williams referral agent out in Arizona? Okay, there's one, now your one sales is maybe turning to two. Okay, do you need to sell before you buy or have you purchased anything here, Mr. Mr. Krieger? Oh no, well, we can wait, we don't need to buy, we can buy now. Okay, now your one sale, which you thought was just one listing appointment, has a possible turned into three sales for you, okay? So dig a little deeper 
and don't take your, your answer to the one surface question that you have um, asked them, okay? Once this questionnaire is completed, you have a great understanding of their situation and it's time to set the appointment. So you gotta give them options. I mean, how many times do you call the doctor or the dentist, which you should be all going to the doctor and dentist, anyway, and saying, hey, we got availability tomorrow at 11. Or, or they say, well, why don't you just come in tomorrow? They don't say that. They say, why don't you come in Friday at 2.30, right? So be direct and say, these are my options. Friday at 10.30, Saturday at 10. Give them choices, okay? Don't just say, when is your availability? Your schedule is most important as them, okay? Time is important. You're gonna set it and you're gonna send them a calendar invite so it goes on their calendar because you have all their contact information. You have their cell phones and you have their emails. Make specific times, okay? Colleen? Yes. Can we get a copy of your seller questionnaire? Yes, I have sheet? copies up here. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Make sure all decision makers are there. Because otherwise you're going to get, eh, I got to talk to the husband, or I'm going to decide on Friday, or you want to sleep on it, okay? You need to make sure all decision makers are present at the appointment, okay? If you've got a husband that's out of town on business, because of course there's all exceptions to the rule, get him on Zoom, okay? You can have him on Zoom. But it's harder to say no to someone in person than it is over the phone. The phone's a scapegoat. Be in front of them and be present, okay? You also are prepping one to two hours for this listing presentation. This is a big presentation. These people pay us a lot of money to sell their home, and you know you don't get paid till you sell that house, okay? So you wanna make sure all parties are present. There's nothing wrong with saying, I would prefer if you if we could you know, all meet together and you know, and Mr. and Mrs. Krieger, and we're all here together, okay? And go for a one-time listing appointment, not a two-time. Now, what is a two-time listing appointment? A two-timer is where they say, hey, why don't you come over? My buddy wants to sell his house. You know nothing about the house. You show up to the house and, hey, well, oh, I forgot to tell you about the extra bathroom in the basement, and oh yeah, we remodeled the kitchen, and you haven't done your questionnaire, okay? You haven't pre-qualified the seller. You want a one-timer, the goal is to go, present, and leave with a signed listing agreement, okay? So you do not want, you'll hear in the industry a two-time listing appointment. You always wanna go for one, okay? Ask them on the phone if they're interviewing other agents. It's awkward, I'm gonna tell you this, and it's uncomfortable, okay? But it's okay. Once you get under, over, it's like making phone calls. This is that by owners and circle prospecting. You've gotta know who your competition is. I wanna know who is gonna, who they're interviewing, if they'll tell you, and when they're coming because I wanna be the first one in the door to get that listing agreement so they cancel all the other appointments, okay? Sound confident in your tone on the phone and your intention. You gotta sound confident. If you're some laxy-daisy agent, well, you know, hey, 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 they, they get the vibe. They can feel and they can read right through you, especially depending on the personality. There's nothing wrong with asking, are you interviewing other agents? Well, yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna talk to three or four, no, they're not. 100%, they're just probably ask, maybe interviewing one other one, or maybe two, okay? And lastly, I want you to ask if you're, if the listing that you're taking, for the purposes of today, we're gonna be a house in Mayfield Heights. Um, if you have a point of sale, so if you're in a municipality where you have a point of sale, you've got to have a discussion with the seller on that. Whether it's Cleveland Heights, Shaker Heights, Mayfield Heights, um, I'm just gonna think some off the top of my head that I know. Mm -hmm. Hunting Valley, Gates Mills just got rid of theirs. Uh, any Heights in general has point of sale. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Seller, hey, Mr. Krieger, have you called Mayfield Heights Building Department and got your point of sale hooked up, um, set up? There's applications online that they can go, but you wanna get this all done. My personal experience of doing this, I like to advertise a house POS compliant, 100%, because otherwise you get, well, I got seven, Violations corrected out of eight. And now I gotta put money in escrow because it's the dead of winter and we can't fix this. And just do your homework in advance, guys, okay? Get your property disclosures up, get your lead base paint, get your home warranty app up on supplements. And if you have a point of sale, get that up. It's a cleaner transaction and there's no drama, okay? There's a lot of agents out there that you will encounter, that I've encountered over my years that like to stir up everything. It's just, it's nice and clean. So have that conversation with the seller uh, while you're having them on the phone, okay? And then you go in for the close. If, there's a, if everything I said, if everything I have said makes sense, would you be willing to sign a listing agreement, you know, Friday when I come over at 10, okay? You will find out who that decision maker is and that person uh, because 
you just need to know and we go in for the quote. Everyone play a little video. Benny, if you have any modern family. Why would you buy a home without a realtor? Would you canoe without a life jacket? Would you ride on the back of a motorcycle without hanging on tight to your girlfriend? I'm your girlfriend. <laughs> if you ever Google him, he has this whole litany of them. I mean, they're hilarious, one after another. So be sure to page two of your handout just to kind of set the expectation up front. Just a reminder, um, you're getting all their contact information. You're confirming all decision makers will be there. You're communicating your preparation. Your time is important uh, as well as their time, okay? You guys, this takes some time to set this up. And you need to uh, communicate your value proposition to the seller, okay? You're gonna set that scheduled appointment and you're gonna know if they are interviewing other realtors and when those appointments are, okay? And you wanna set three goals for your appointment. Number one, what's most important to the seller? Always ask them what is their preferred communication method. We have texters, we have emailers, depending on their demographic. You may want someone that likes to call you and they want you to leave voicemails, okay? It's a little unheard of sometimes, but if you have a 70 or five year old grandma who wants a phone call, you gotta respect that. So ask them that, okay? Then of course you're gonna go through all the market data and the comps in Mayfield Heights. And then what is their bottom line? Okay, well, we're not gonna take anything less than 150. Oh, you know how many times I heard that, okay. Right. But guess what? They're going to, okay. If they have an offer and it's been on the market for 30, 40 days and you got a signed offer sitting in front of you, they're gonna pay cash and this and that. So take that with a grain of salt, always, okay. But just know in your heart what their bottom line is, what's most important to them, okay. And then you can be really bold, which I have at times, um, and just say, have a key ready for me at the, for the front door my your lockbox is in the car. Okay, that's really bold. That's really ballsy, but go for it. What the hell? Okay? And now you have time to meet Mr. and Mrs. Krieger at the house. Okay? Now, there are physical rituals out there that uh, I just read this book called Own the Room. It's an amazing book. Easy read. Um, we all have physical rituals. If you really, I have a, I have a music pump up me uh, iPad or music list that I play, but Mike Arco, where are you? Mike, will you read this? Can you see this? That's right, Chris, can you, can you see this? Would you yeah. mind reading it? Uh, rituals like these help to manage your nerves, something that no one is instituted. All leaders have situations or audiences that challenge their nerves and put them at, on edge. This is a common response to high stakes and not a weakness. Take Bill Russell, arguably one of the best players in NBA history, a five-time winner of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award, and 12-time All-Star. He is often credited for being the key reason the Celtics won a historic 11 NBA championships. Despite this tremendous success, it was well, it was well known that Russell threw up, threw up before every game. Even at the top of his field, he felt nervous about going out into the court. Michael Jordan was known to calm his nerves by putting on his University of North Carolina shorts under his full shorts. Physical rituals matter, and our top players and leaders alike need to find ways to create and institutionalize them. So you may not know if you have a physical ritual. You may not even know that. Or maybe should you start one? I have my playlist that I pump up that I was actually listening prior to this event. <laughs> um, it's like my first Harry Keller event. My favorite is ACDC, and he was fun. I was like, wow, I already love this place. You're playing ACDC? Because Gary's always playing that on before he goes out. I mean, you've ever seen Michael Phelps sitting on the sideline at the Olympics before he swims and he's got his headphones on, okay? You gotta, before you get to that front door, everything has to be left outside. You may have had a tip with your spouse, the kids are driving you crazy, there's a real error that something went south on a deal, um, you just received a horrible counter, or what we're most experiencing of all is you just lost out on a multiple offer for the third time, okay? And guess what, you have to be in your happy mode for Mr. and Mrs. Krieger, okay? You have to set the mindset that all those troubles stay outside the door so you are fully present for them and your focus is on them and selling your home and what's best important for them, okay? So if you don't have a ritual and you feel that sometimes when you walk into a seller's home, you have this baggage, so to speak, in the back of your head, you've gotta clear your head, 
okay? Whether it's sitting in the car for an extra two minutes because you're gonna show up 15 minutes early, um, you gotta have that. So, great question. Okay, so you're gonna route, you're at the house. It's time for the appointment. You're gonna arrive 15 minutes early. You're gonna park in the street and take a picture of the outside. I always just take a picture of the outside. And you're gonna walk around the front. You don't wanna be creepy people and walk in their backyard yet. And you gotta look like a million bucks. I'm not a fan of jeans on listing appointments, but teach his own. Um, hair coy, shoes shine, no wrinkly clothes. And ladies, you gotta have your nails done. No chip nail polish. It shows your lack of attention to detail. It's either all on or all off. Your hands are prime real estate on that table if you're going through paperwork. Okay, because all they're doing is looking at paperwork and they're looking at your nails. Okay, so just a little tip there. All right, and make sure as you walk up to the front door, yeah, exactly, there's a plug. Um, if you walk up to the front door, you got the wandering eye on, okay? You start at the top. What's the condition of the roof, the windows? Is, do you have siding on the house? Is there aluminum or vinyl? Is, do you have chipped painting, which is gonna come into play, the light bulb goes off if you have an FHA or VA loan with a point of sale, okay? You wanna look at the condition of the garage, how big's the backyard, uh, and then you ring the doorbell and we're gonna go into our live listing presentation, okay? Gary, like I said, as a reminder, we'll put up as we're in each room um, the slides, but do you have any questions about what we just did for an introduction prior to the pre-qualification of the seller? Is this helpful? Yes. Okay. Mike. Do you, do you actually show up 15 minutes prior? Like oh, when you knock on the door and let them know that you're there? Is it at that time? No, I just kind of walk around the front, taking okay. pictures, and then I walk up. I always like to be early. Park in the street. You gotta see the condition of the driveway. You don't know if the son or daughter coming home, someone's gotta leave. I mean, it's just common courtesy. All right, any questions? Anyone else? Okay, all right, let's rock and roll. Mr. and Mrs. Krieger, we have Anna White. Gary's this, all right. <laughs> here to Mike and Scott's office is going to be the front door. Okay. Well, just don't mind me. Don't mind me. <laughs> don't leave time. All right. So Buyer's attention to any exclusion, they always want it. 
Okay, we can certainly address that at the time, but if you do want to take it and it's a family important to you, we definitely, I would just recommend uh, replacing it. Again, you just don't want to draw any uh, eyes to the buyer because they will, when you draw exclusions, they will notice that. Okay? All right, sounds, sounds good. good. All right, well, let's move to the kitchen. We're about to cook. Look how beautiful this is. <laughs> Uh, they're new. We got the fridge last year because it died. We spent 1200 bucks on it. Um, the microwave and stove, they're three years old. Dishwasher is a little older. It's 10. Um, but I have all the manuals, warranties, everything that we can you know, give to whoever buys the house. Great, great. That's uh, so awesome that you've updated some appliances. Do you guys have a garbage disposal as well? Uh, yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. And, and the kitchen. Ki oh, I love my kitchen. Um, <laughs> You haven't gutted the kitchen and cleaned the remodel. You just resurfaced the front. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, thank you. The kitchen looks beautiful. All right, should we move up to the master bedroom? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Notice the carpeting had some stains on it. Have you recently had that shampooed or, or plan on shampooing? Yeah, that? we had it shampooed about a year ago. It, it's older though. Okay. And uh, the I, I noticed the uh, bedroom is nice neutral color. Did you recently paint that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just okay. recently. Great. Great. So can we go see the other two bedrooms as well? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Great. Great. Just wait. Yeah, so this is our daughter's room. Um, she likes blue, and we haven't touched it since we moved out. Okay. Would you guys be open to possibly painting it a more neutral color? Uh, sure, we're open to it, but what else are you going to have us to do? Well, I just want to make sure that the bedroom shows online in the best um, possible color. And sometimes off colors can draw people's attention to it, so we want to make it nice and neutral. Um, and, and Mrs. Krieger, to address your question, you know, we, we definitely can discuss that at the table, because as soon as we're done finishing the house, can add up, you know, any upgrades that I would suggest that you require to look at. Yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Great. Okay. So let's check out the third bedroom. Let's take a look. Right. This is the third bedroom. So this is a great size room. I see there's a walk-in closet. Are you taking all this furniture and boxes with you? Uh, it'll all be donated. Okay. Yeah, well, this, this is, we use this room for our catch-all room. Got it. Okay, so all this furniture is going to be gone. Yeah, and, okay, absolutely. Great. So at this point, I would just highly recommend that we just empty the room so that people can see the size of it, um, considering you're not utilizing it for an actual bedroom per se, and there's no furniture in here. Okay, so why don't we check out the bathroom? Yeah. Right. So I see the tan and brown tile. Is and have you updated some other items in here? Yeah, we uh, we redid the toilet and the new vanity, but obviously we we haven't touched the tile. So there's companies out there that can spray tile versus, you know, pulling it off and remodeling it. Um, but it, to make it just a neutral light, a neutral white, excuse me, and then along with your other upgrades, um, you know, would that be something you would consider? Yeah, I mean, we can definitely talk about it. So. Okay, great. Let's go down to the basement. Perfect. Okay, well, our laundry room and rec room are down here. But it can get very damp and musty down here. As I sometimes come down to do laundry. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Could you run a dehumidifier down here? Because I, I would highly recommend just because you're in the basement and moisture tends to sit and we just want to, you know, capture that moisture and run the dehumidifier in the basement. And then how old is your, um, uh, I noticed some effervescence on the wall. Did you have water down here? Yeah, once about like 10 years ago, there's big storm, things got backed up, but we haven't had any issues since. Okay. So two things that prevent that or can help prevent that is, um, you know, cleaning your downspots, making sure they're clear, as well as landscaping. I did notice when I came up to the house, landscaping has done a little bit of pitches inward, so you always want to just make sure the landscaping grays away from the home, because that can contribute to that effervescence in the, in the basement, sure. in, in, the, in that water. Um, how old is your furnace and AC? Uh, brand new, we got them this year. Okay, great. So that's a huge upgrade in terms of houses at this age. Um, I also see you have glass block with vents, and that's always good for ventilation. And can you show me where your electrical box is? Yes, it's right here. Okay, so it's a Federal Pacific box. Mm -hmm. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, 
So these electrical panels have been known uh, to be recalled in 2002. They've been known to um, cause this is the safety hammer, so to speak, in the home. I know it's been fine since you've been here. A lot of people say, well, we've had this electrical panel in here the whole time. Uh, but at the same time, I always suggest that we replace that prior to listing the home because it will come up as an inspection item. Okay, yeah, I never do that. Again, if it's in the budget, we can certainly talk about that. Okay, okay great. So why don't we head back upstairs and sit at the uh, dining room table to go over our paperwork. Sure. Would that be okay? Yeah, right. let's go. Absolutely. Any questions about the live listing presentation before we sit down? Okay. Would it be okay if I sit across the table from you so you two can sit together and go over paperwork? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So I just want to say thanks for having me over again today. You have a beautiful home. Um, and then this folder, which I'm going to go over, contains a lot of information. But I just want to briefly go over with you. Is there any best? Okay. Uh, all right, so first I'd like to introduce our team to you, meet the team. So again, my name is Colleen Nicholas. I run my own team and I have two buyers agents. And uh, Liz Kosminski is my transaction coordinator. You will be dealing with Liz upon uh, when we get an offer and upon receipt of that. Uh, and then, of course, Terry, who is our social marketing lead, okay? Uh, knowing that you always have me to talk to and I will negotiate on behalf with the purchase price of your home, as well as all repairs post home inspection, okay? Texting and email me. Even though you will interact with maybe other team members, I am always available, okay? Next, we have our mission and values and vision as a team, okay? This is how we do business and our professionalism. Um, as you'll see in my, our next, uh, my next form, just uh, our success as a team, but how we take care of, based on our experience, and our, um, our integrity and our results. And, but of course, we have to get funds in. So we're gonna do that, okay? All right. And then I also have here for you our uh, results from 2020. We did sell 79 homes as a team, selling around 18 and a half million. That excludes two new construction homes that were in there. Uh, but we do, I always say I'm a diversified agent. There's no particular area that I, uh, that I sell in. Everyone said, you know, you'll see your agents that want to know uh, basically what area you specialize in. Uh, but these are our success. We do a lot of land and, um, and homes, okay? I do also staging services that I offer as a value proposition that's exclusive to our team. There's some before and after pictures that you can take a look at. Um, I will work with you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Krieger, on staging all the rooms of your home to make sure it shows its best online, okay? Okay, and then of course our testimonials that you will, um, that I sent you prior to, when I followed up in your email, you can review those at your leisure, okay? All right, so great. So there's also some random flyers in here just about selling your home. Um, I know it's been a while since you probably sold a home, so this is just a few reminders to keep out your process and whatnot, Perfect. okay? Any questions so far? Yeah, we're good. So far. Great, so let me ask you, I know pricing was um, most important to you when we talked on the phone. Uh, so let's talk about your upgrades. Um, I would say the three upgrades that I would recommend is, you know, painting the neutral, uh, the blue bedroom more neutral, uh, replacing the Federal Pacific box, and then of course, if it's in the budget, to uh, spray the tile in the bathroom. So I do have some upgrades for the bathroom. Just by spraying that tile, it could look like a whole brand new uh, bathroom, and we could bring the top dollar. Okay. So do you think that would be um, some comfortable? You know, I don't know what you gathered in your budget on what you felt comfortable spending in terms of improvement? Probably around three grand is okay. what, we, what we'd be willing to do before we list. Okay, great. So I definitely think those three items are affordable in that budget. And I don't know if you had people of your own that contractors or electricians or companies that could do that for you. I have some as well, but you certainly can utilize that to compare prices. And so if we're gonna be doing this before, I'm assuming that means you'll be taking out from your commission yeah, so I appreciate that, great question. So I know your bottom line is important to you. Um, I wanna be sure we achieve the highest possible price for your home. And I, I just don't know, you know, you need a strong negotiator on your behalf, um, which I would obviously represent. So, I mean, how strong do you think another agent will get a higher price on your home if they're so quick to reduce their commission? You know, that would they be the first to call you after two weeks, three weeks to drop the price if the house hasn't sold, or at the same time, 
make sure that um, you know you get an offer and it's below your list price. You need a strong negotiator on your behalf, and that's what I would do. Okay, our listing agreement reads seven percent, and we take six month listing agreements. Yeah, but so we only want like a ninety day because if, if you can't sell it in three months, um, we have a friend who they'll just do it for us. Sure, sure, and I can appreciate that. It's a valid concern. So our company policy is six month listing agreements. I want to make sure I can get you what you want in the time you want. And, and I love that you have a friend in the business. Most sellers do know realtors in the business. But you've asked me over here today uh, to show you what I could do. If you think so far that I, everything I'm saying so far, I could sell your house. Uh, yeah, so far. Great, so let's move on. We, we have a question. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we just do this ourselves? Great question, uh, Mrs. Krieger. You know, uh, I appreciate that. So a lot of sellers think they can do it for sale by owners by themselves. Um, I understand, but unfortunately you're losing out on a large pool of buyers that are not gonna be available to see your home in MLS. Statistics show that 2% of for sale by owners actually sell their house, okay? Or 98% are using a real estate agent to facilitate that process, okay? We, I don't want you, can you afford to lose 2% of chance of selling your home, okay? So let's do the right thing, get the most amount of money in the time that you want. Sound great? Sounds great. Great, so let's review the comparables. Okay, so I did bring here Mayfield Heights comparables in a three bedroom, um, single family home, two car attached garage with a basement. I left the bathrooms off and I do this when I pull comparables because not all bathrooms are accurate in homes. And so I wanna make sure that we are pulling, um, once we list the home, uh, we have the exact data uh, since I've been over here and I know the exact uh, criteria of your home. Okay, so you'll currently see there's six homes active on the market. There's 20 under contract and 69 have sold within the past um, six months. I did pull the $300,000, $700,000 houses out because I feel it skews off the difference, okay? You're in a three bedroom home. Um, so I just did zero to 250, okay? We gotta pull those new construction homes out of Mayfield Heights because they won't grow off the numbers, okay? So what we wanna look at is the square footage and the upgrades that you have done. You know, you have the beautiful HVAC system, you have upgrades in your kitchen appliances, you know, updates that you have done to contribute to increasing the value of your home, okay? So if you look at this, on average, you're seeing $146 a square foot, and your house is 1,300 square feet, so that equates to around 190,000, give or take, okay? And look at the amazing days on the market here. We're talking 29 days on the market. So Mayfield Heights is hot, homes are selling, and the odds are definitely in your favor, okay? This is amazing. So when you have a combination of the upgrades and some other items, you know, you're definitely in a range from 185,000 to 200. Did you have a price point in mind on what you were thinking? Probably more around 200, yeah. Okay, great, so we're definitely on the same page. And then how much do I have to pay, you know, pay every week? Great, so there's, that's a great question. So when you're a seller, there's three things you have to pay out. Number one, you pay out your, we, you have to pay your tax, six months in the rears, okay? Because it's closed in June, you're really paying July and December of last year, and then you have to bring all your taxes up to date. So that's number one. Okay, so again, three things we pay out when we sell sellers sell houses, your, your um, real estate taxes. Number two, you have to pay two real estate brokerages. You'll pay your listing brokerage, and you'll pay the brokerage that brings in the buyer. Okay, and then number three, you'll have closing costs. Sellers have closing costs, and buyer, just your title and providing it to the title. And buyers will have closing costs that have their title and mortgage. Those are three givens, okay? As a fourth variable that's not always a given is if the offer comes in and the buyer needs seller concessions, as they say, or they need someone to cover, uh, you, you being the someone, the seller to cover their closing costs, okay? That's coming from their lender, that's not coming from the realtor, that's not coming from them. But based on their loan, okay, they may need that. Now that's always negotiable, okay? You could, we could jack the price of the house up, you could say only we'll pay in half, so on and so forth. The three givens though are your taxes, your realtors, and your closing costs. And this the fourth variable is the buyer's uh, concessions, okay? Or seller concessions that you're coming to the buyer, okay? But again, we won't know that until we get the offer. So on average, on average, those three are about 10% of the purchase price, give or take a high tax area like Shaker Heights, for example, I'll think, okay? All right, any questions about the payouts? Great question. So 
That is exactly what I was going to go over next. So first and foremost, we're going to prep and stage the house. Okay. As I did say, I do offer staging services, uh, but we offer, if you wanted to hire a company, I do know of people that, and companies that can come in and uh, I can even suggest things to you. Um, I come over and you and I will walk room to room and I will make my suggestions and get a hit list, so to speak, on starting to prep the house as you're starting to work on the three items that, we're gonna, that we agreed upon to work on, okay? Number two, I'm gonna, our, we have a professional photographer that I pay for that will take pictures of your home to put online. The MLS allows 35 pictures to put online. There's no reason to not use all 35. In the search engine optimization on realtor.com, if you have a house that has 17 pictures and a house that has 35, the house with 35 will shoot to the top versus the one that doesn't. Okay, so we wanna make sure we have all our, we have 35 pictures. And we wanna make sure it flows through the house, okay? You know, how many times we go online and we look at a house where we're in a bedroom, we're in the backyard, we're in a bathroom, we're in the living room, and I'm like, ah, click, next house, okay? <laughs> So you want to make sure that it flows from the living room to the dining room to the kitchen, if there is a family room, up to the bedroom, <coughs> possible a bathroom if, if it's you know, worth noting, into the basement and out to the backyard, just like you would show a house if you went out looking, okay? So we want to make sure that the house flows well online and it shows its best with all the details of the lower, okay? We also will have a broker's open <coughs> to get to that point, because houses are moving so fast and they feel like but on Tuesdays from 11.30 to 2.30, as, as real estate agents, we go shopping on Tuesdays for our clients. There's also an opportunity to make sure that our clients could come in and view the homes uh, prior. They're previewing the homes to their buyers, but there's times that the buyers are available and I say, sure, I, I will honor that. Or if they wanna have a showing during that time, I just ask them to register so we have record of that, okay? And then of course, we'll talk about open houses. Yes, you're gonna get the nosy neighbors. Yes, you're gonna get the guy next door or the guy driving down the street that sees the sign and doesn't know what the heck, uh, how much the house is or are they pre-approved. Uh, but if you feel comfortable having open houses, we can trigger that discussion, okay? Um, we'll also, obviously it will be marketed to all our social media accounts. You know, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. We will put that all out there. We all share it as a team with our 14 members. You're going on to 20, 25 different accounts. Okay, as well as our brokerage account. We do have 455 agents in our brokerage. We are the number one brokerage in the multiple listing service, so most homes sold and the highest volume of these homes. So I wanna be sure that you fit right into that collection. Okay, we, I also will send out 100 just listed postcards to the neighborhood, okay? Sometimes your best advocate is the nosy neighbor that knows someone that wants to move in the neighborhood. So we'll make sure that 100 just listed postcards do go out to the neighborhood. Okay. Um, besides sending it out to our brokerage, I've been a realtor long enough to know that half the realtors I work with are on my phone, so I'm gonna network with other co-brokers, okay? Other realtors at other companies. How often not, I can't even tell you how many times a week I get texts telling you do you have anything coming up in this city, in this price point, okay? So I definitely will want to network with other brokerages because some of my fellow colleagues have buyers that are looking in the area, okay? And then once your listing goes live, within 48 hours, it gets released to realtor.com, Zillow, and it goes on over 300 websites um, that uh, advertise homes for sale. Okay, any other questions you have for me? Uh, I think it's very thorough and you covered everything. Thank you, so, so I can get you what you want in the time you want, would you be willing to sign those listing agreements? Sure. Here's a pen. <laughs> 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 Going for the clubs. <laughs> okay, well, that's just a jump board. Thank you. All right, any questions about the sit down portion of it before we move on? Colleen, well, I had a quick question. Yeah. I really liked how you responded about a FISBO type situation. Sure. And this, you may not know this, and you may have to research it, but is there any data versus what? exposure they get on Zillow, because that's their go-to when they want to do FISBO sure, sure. versus the MLS. So I don't know those stats to answer your question, thank you. Uh, but I will say that at the bottom, if you read the fine lines on Zillow, it says we are not licensed appraisers, and that's my go-to line. Okay. Because when you do have a licensed appraiser in your home, they're pulling the comparables, as I tell a seller, the same day you're, if you're pulling, I'm pulling. I meet all my appraisers at every single listing. Right. I provide three comparables, whether they're contingent or sold. Okay, and I'm sliding them over, and half the time the appraisers are like, oh yeah, Kyle, we know about that, honey, we know about that. 
Great, so we're all on the same page. And there are some appraisers that will say, well, you'll have no problem with this one. Right, that's what I wanna hear, but when I see it in writing, I'll believe it, right. okay? But at the same time, uh, I always just remind them that, you know, they're, in the fine print it does say we're not licensed appraisers. So, back to the, yes? Um, before you go on your, um, your listing appointment, you said uh, in your comps, you leave off the bathroom. How many, how many comps do you usually bring to the meeting and how detailed do you get with them? So I normally bring three, well, I, I normally bring three, just, just like I would an appraiser. But I also remind them that I am sometimes, most of the time have been in these homes, uh, whether it be showing or, you know, um, um, just observing them through a broker's open and wanna make sure that they're all sold because until it's sold, it's, you know, not so I normally don't bring pendings, not like an appraiser. Uh, but we wanna make sure that I bring comparables that meet the criteria that maybe some things are dated and some things are upgraded. So that it's literally, we're, you know, comparing apples to apples. Okay, but normally three to two. Deb, so oh, Kelly, yeah. <laughs> so your sellers have signed the listing agreement, mm -hmm. but you have told them to do things. Now, the Federal Pacific Box, they don't need to do before they market it. Sure. But the blue room, they need to do. Sure. So are you telling them that we're gonna sign it now and- I just don't make them date it. If you know when you date it, you have 48 hours to put it on the list. Right. Okay, so that's my question. Yep. Is So they've signed it, they have a price, but no date. Correct. Okay. But I always say that the price is gonna be variable because let's just say it takes a month to do the box, the painting, and the tile, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. Every day there's new listings coming on, every day there's listings going to contingent, and of course every day there's houses closing. So it's gonna be skewed a little bit, give or take. That's why I always give a range. I always give a range, I never give a price point. Okay. I'm gonna tell you, some sellers want you to come over and just say, hey, what's the price? Well, I'm not gonna go with you because Joe Schmo down the road in Hohas is gonna offer me that I, my house is worth X. I give a range and I said, we're gonna revisit this at the time. But it's not. there's nothing wrong with saying to a seller, do you have any, you know, they always have a price point in mind, 100%. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking them so they're on the same page. There's times that I've asked in the pre-qualification for a seller to ask, do you have a price in mind? Now we'll probably only, rarely do they say, well, that's what I have to be here for. But okay. they sometimes do. <laughs> sometimes do, but again, it's the art of persuasion. You got to know how to know your sellers and sometimes it may not happen on the phone. Mm -hmm. It's gotta happen maybe at the appointment. You gotta, which is I'm gonna go into a little bit, you gotta dig a little bit deeper and start reading them a little bit. You gotta start learning how to understand the psychology of a human and reading the, their body language and how they're speaking to you and so on and so forth. And can you get that out of them? What questions are you asking to get the answer? But what I normally do, like I said, and then we set up a time frame. Once they sign, I have a game plan. I never leave the appointment without the next game plan. Perfect. Yeah. You have it. You have your appointment. We know what's going on here, and we're not leaving till we have a next appointment. Yeah. Okay. I just did that for a listing on Calverton. Yeah. So I really had it one month sitting until we were ready to to mark, to you know launch it last sure. week. But I rarely do that, so it's a good it's a good thing. So well, because you have it done, signed. If they're if they're likely to sign, they're likely to cancel those other listing appointments. Right. They're not right. going to sign with three people. I have a ton. It depends, I think, on the conversation of how long things are going to take, depending on what they're doing. They may already have upgrades that they're working on prior to even your arrival. Like, let's in this situation, they had a brand new HVAC system, but maybe something's going in next week, but yet it got delayed because of COVID and you know all the stuff that we're dealing with right now. And the, you have them fill out all the paperwork. I have them find out, fill out the listing agreement. Not the rest of the, not the I don't, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll do that at the time. Okay. They think they're on the contract. Yeah, they think they're on the contract. Right, you sign a paper, how many times you go to listing, well I didn't sign anything with that realtor. How often do you hear that? Well, I didn't sign anything. Okay, because the minute they sign, they're, they're bound by you. Um, or at least they feel they're bound by you. No, it's not active yet. So rip this up and throw it away. Did you have a question here? I guess on the listing agreement, do you put an exact price or do you put a range then? If no, you know I mean, at the time, I would so. put to be determined because okay. if they're depending, you know, if the house is perfect and we're all in agreement on price, I'm gonna put the price. Right. right. But if it's stuff that they're working on and we still gotta, oh, you know, we're two months out, you know, yet, mm -hmm. then two months, 60 days could affect your price sure. in, in, a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna wait, and, and I have discussions with them with them on it. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you. Sure. Any other questions about the system? Yes. Um, when they questioned your commission, yeah. I noticed you moved pretty fast through. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. Okay. Hold that thought. I uh, cushion things. <laughs> I've learned over my years, over my, having many bosses and family members, and my husband. I learned to cushion the bad news. <laughs> I'll talk about that. Okay. <coughs> you did the range for the price. What about the the, the, the date for, for getting it to market? Do you give them like, okay, you've got this, this, and this to do? You kind of have that discussion too, like how long do you think it's going to yeah, take? Yeah, you're going to gonna set up done? a timeline with them. Yep, okay. and I follow up with email. An attorney, I have very good friends that are attorneys. They'll always tell you, you follow, take your conversation and turn it into an email. Okay, mm -hmm. so please put things in writing. If there's one thing I can suggest to you, whether it be a text or a, an email, fine. But when somebody calls you, follow up with an email. Say, thank you so much for your conversation. I'm so glad we talked about blah, 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 and you have it in an email. Okay, put things in writing. If you ever get audited or ever get, knock on wood, if there's any lawsuit ever against you, I hope there isn't ever. But if this comes to fruition, you can say that, because it's all hearsay. You know, like, I didn't know, I didn't say that. You know, mm -hmm. get voicemails, whatever. Just turn your phone calls into emails. Just thank you so much. Just wanted to follow up with our phone call. Um, at the time, it, like I just said, if, it, if it's at the time and they're ready to go, we're going to determine the price. Mm -hmm. But at the time, if they're going to fix up some things, we're definitely on the same page in terms of what the list price is. Mm -hmm. We're just going to revisit it when they say, hey, next Friday, we're ready to go. Okay. You know, And I'm working with them. You know, They're getting their contractors in, and I'm working with them on staging the house. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to the final portion, calls, cuts. These are just going to be my suggestions. Um, my little tagline that I came up with. Um, so I want you to notice when I walked through the house how I was very positive about the house okay and we don't want to draw any negativity these are people's homes this is their their livelihoods they can take offense to things on how and how you say it so as my grandma would tell me it's not what you say it's how you say it right so you just want to make sure that you're positive if there's a ravine in the backyard and the bathroom is like an aqua tile Sure, there's going to be negatives. How many times have we showed houses where it, there's negative um, feedback? I mean, we've all had clients, they nickname house. You know, that's the moldy house. That was the greenhouse. You know, I mean, flip, flip the coin here when you're a buyer's agent, okay? We've all had clients. Heck, we nickname them, okay? But you just want to make sure that you're being positive. But you need to be realistic because at the time of the listing, when the showing start and they, they're, they're being abrasive and they're, I'm not doing that, I don't want to do that. And the showing start and they say, hey, uh, you know what, you know what, you're getting feedback about the bathroom. I'll make the, use that as an example, okay? You can't say that you didn't tell them, okay? And you don't want to say, well, you never told me this, okay? I always say, I can't help where your house sits and I can't help the layout of your house, but I can certainly help the cosmetic uh, points to your house. So if they're, they're complaining about the carpeting or they're complaining about the painting, or, you know, and it's a consistent feedback. What is a can of paint? It's showing away, it's 35 bucks, okay? Could be a lot of carpet allowance, you know, if they don't wanna do it or maybe they're not here. Okay, so you just wanna make sure that you're addressing the positive and negatives of the home in a kindly manner, okay? You, you can't be, you gotta be careful because some people can take offense to this, okay? You need to carry a binder with you at all times. Notice I have my binder with me when I'm walking through the house. Be professional, okay? My binder is pretty simple. This is this is me 24 7. Okay, I got my business cards, my buyer's agents, a pen, and a pad. Okay, don't walk around with some pad ripped off paper up top. Okay, be professional. I take this to parent night with my kids. I mean, I, I have a boss with a, a meeting with my boss. I mean, this thing goes everywhere with me. Be professional, walk in, and you're taking these notes as you're walking around the room. Okay, be sensitive. If you're, a, if you're in some guy's office and he's a golfer, acknowledge it. He's a football and they want to talk about how he's a quarterback star and how they get <laughs> Take your notes, okay? Be detailed, okay? And make, um, make it a point to know what's important to them, okay? Did you ever go to a cocktail party and they say, God, that's Cindy Sobel. God, she was amazing. What a great girl she is. Cindy didn't say one word to you all night because guess what? She just talked about you. The best salesperson talks about the other person, okay? Right. But she was an amazing person to hang out with and have a glass of wine with. 
But yet all she did, and, and, and a persuasive salesperson knows how to do this, I asked Cindy, how's your grandkids? And she'll immediately turn around on me. People love to talk about themselves, right? So talk about the other party. As they say at Keller Williams, the sport, right? Family, occupation, recreation, and drink. Hey, I saw on Facebook, um, you know, Valley's kids, you know, had a great football game or something, you know, or you got a new job, or they went on a vacation, okay? They're gonna say how amazing it was to meet you at a party, okay? And yet you, they don't know anything about you, right? Because they in turn turned it on you and talked about you the whole time, okay? That carries the family for us, okay? So, example. I will tell you, I had a big listing, you can look this up, 773 Village Trail in Gates Mills, my biggest listing ever, 1.9 million. I get this referral, I gotta go meet this big exec from um, Key Bank. I'm going on a listing appointment, and I'm up against two people. He tells me who the two people are, and we know them very well, a male and a female, and I am nervous as anything, okay? But I Google this guy, Mr. Hartman, I'll never forget, Bill Hartman, and he's been published, he's a big exec. So I used one of his quotes in one of his published articles at my listing presentation, and he was blown away. I was like, oh, so you know, I like you said in this, and then he was like, how do you even know? I said that, because I researched him. Look the people up that you're going to, um, you're going to visit, know something about them, Google them. Google yourself, see what comes up. It's amazing what you can find about people when you Google them, okay? And if you don't have a team, who cares? Okay, I was an agent for 15 years by myself. I didn't have a team, but you have a team here. They're called Mike, Danielle, Julia, Kiara, <coughs> Terry. You have a lending company, we have a title company. You have a team, you have a professional photographer. If you don't have the statistics to have in your sales presentation, use the market statistics. I think last week the average price point in the market center was $235,000. Use those stats. If you're newer into the business, okay? Make up your own marketing flyers and utilize that for yourself. So what, you don't have a team, and maybe you don't want one, okay? But use what you have here. On November 8th, they're having the business planning clinic here, or not here, but they're having it at the market center in Broadview Heights, I believe. Um, I've worked for three other brokerages, and I think Debbie and Cindy can attest to this. Jake, oh yeah, I'm wrong. Um, I've been at Realty One, where I started with Debbie. I've been at Century 21, and I worked at Remax for 10 years. There is no place like Keller Williams and what you will learn at that business planning clinic. If someone were to teach me that 17 years ago, I would be in a whole different spot right now. I'll tell you, and with my sales volume and my team. Should I don't even think I would have a team. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, if you guys need to come to that class, there is so, the grass is not greener on the other side all the time. I will tell you that. Okay, can you attest to that? In terms of the business planning clinic. I think it's an amazing, it's, it's an amazing class. Not on your schedule put it on um, but I and definitely teaches you how what you need to do to get where you want to be okay so definitely put that on um, know the power of silence okay guys ask a question and be quiet notice the awkward silence in the room okay <laughs> all right we're salespeople we like to talk ask your question and we keep talking okay just be quiet. That awkward silence will make the other party, it forces them actually to give you an answer, okay? Just stop talking, even though we like to talk. And ask open-ended questions. Do not ask, do you think this? And they say yes or no. You've, you've learned nothing from them, okay? Why, Mr. Krieger, is it important for you to not switch out the federal civic box prior to us listing the house? Why, Mrs. Krieger, do you want to take that you know, excluded chandelier. Hmm. Well, I wish my grandma's from Italy. Oh, you're Italian? Oh, again, we're digging two, three deep. You're taking notes while they're talking, always. Okay? I have a funny example. Brian Young has a listing in Southeast Wood. This is maybe a year and a half ago. The dead of winter. I text him, right, I need to get in. You're not starting showings in the morning. He's like, how I can get you in tonight? Great. It's in Southeast with $180,000 house or multiple offers around the central, we went out. Throughout my process with these buyers, Nate and Sadie, he, I learned that he likes lemon ice. Don't ask me. Just, I just, they, for some reason we were out and they were talking about their grocery list and I overheard this, okay? So I make a note and my, because when I take buyers out, I print out the, the buyer form and I'm taking notes at the, 
the bottom there's a big white spot and I talk about property disclosures and I take notes. It's called noticing the details and the small things about people. And at their housewarming gift, I got them a thing of lemon ice, among many things I got them. And they weren't home, thank God it was winter because it could sit in the snow. <laughs> but you know what he said to me? He said, Kelly, how the heck did you remember? And I just said, I remembered one time when we were out, you said that you liked us. And he's like, oh. And again, it's just noticing the little things about people, okay? And to get to your question, Jared, my next point, cushion your challenges between information, like a sandwich, okay? Jake Lozier sends over removal of contingency. He wants his federal specific box out. Dear Jake, thank you so much for returning the removal of contingency. We look forward to fixing, you know, the plumbing repairs and the um, pests. Uh, we're gonna treat the house for pests and we're gonna clean the HVAC. But my seller is not going to replace the federal specific box. Insert in the middle, okay? And we close. Thank you so much though, you know, please discuss with your buyers. The loan is on track to close. The appraisal's been great, value's there. And we look forward to closing with you on October 12th. What's the last thing Jake remembers about that email? Closing. Closing, right? <laughs> not about the Federal Pacific box that my seller's not going to replace. So to answer your question, I always cushion the bad news in the middle, <laughs> okay? Okay, you open with something, lead in to something, you say the bad news, how many emails do you get? Well, I'm not replacing that. Okay, so abrasive, so front forward, so dramatic, okay? You're building this relationship with the other realtor, okay? For futures to come, you hope to sell more of their listings or more of their buyers, okay? And you guys, when you get upset, your clients get upset. If you relay how upset you are, can you believe that Carrie Mitchell said this to me and she said that, okay? You don't need to say any of that, okay? Grow up. Okay, you just say, great, we have some challenges here, we're gonna release this, but when you're upset, your client gets upset. That's right. And there's no reason for you to voice your opinion about what the other party's doing and the other realtor. Your opinion of the other realtor is null and void to that other party, okay? So be neutral. Make it off your plate and onto their plate before you go to bed, okay? When, because you guys need to sleep on things. You have this, you know, you get an email late at night, mm -hmm or a text late at night and it's not something you wanna hear, it's a bad counter, you're rejected or something, just respond the next day, go to bed and sleep on things, okay? Your conscious will read your subconscious, it's in there, believe me, okay? But what I tell my clients is, when it's something they don't wanna hear, a buyer or a seller, I just say, listen, I don't want you guys to respond tonight, okay? I'm relaying the news to you, I want you to sleep on it, I want you two to talk, or if they're a single person, I say, listen, I don't want, I wanna make a decision. I'm gonna sleep on it, tomorrow morning we're gonna discuss it. Because you wake up with a different mindset in the morning, your head is clear, whether you had good or bad dreams about it, um, but you're gonna wake up and you're gonna feel better about it, okay? And it will affect your decision when you're in the moment at night and you're hot and heavy and you're ready to roll and you're like, nope, it's not gonna to respond to me. I don't wanna hear from you till the morning. Okay, there's nothing wrong with saying that. They actually kind of like that because then they feel like it's pressure, okay? And before you guys go to bed, make sure everything's off your plate and onto somebody else's, okay? Respond to all your emails, respond to all your text messages. Don't wait two to three days to respond to an email or a text message. Off your plate, onto somebody else's, and you need to sleep better at night, okay? And watch their body language. If someone's sitting there like this at a table and they're not being open to you in your responses, okay? If they're rolling their eyes, if they're constantly on their phone while you're talking to them, okay? Um, I don't know, the scrunchy eyebrows. You know, I call, it, I call people out on it. I, I see we're making a face, so let's talk about this. <laughs> okay, so people don't understand that they may be just, you know, un subconsciously doing this. So it's okay to discuss it with them and watch their energy level. Are they super excited when they're, oh my God, there's a seven-year-old grandpa who wants to talk about he was a star football player or a quarterback in the thing. Great, you're taking the note that he was a star quarterback. At this table, you're gonna bring it up again you're connecting with the people you make the connection something that's important to them needs to be important to you okay if they're a grandma and the grandkids are the most important thing and little Sally who's two that was just running around and over the other day you know you bring that up at the closing table because you're taking your notes okay connect with people it's all about a connection you want to build that trust that sellers will connect with you they're trusting you with their largest asset of their life Okay, we're gonna play a little video when Kobe Bryant died two years ago. 
I have three men in my house. ESPN is on my house, in my house 24 seven. And uh, when he passed away, there were all these specials about his family and all these athletes. And this really hit home as something I never forgot. Watch. So the game was at seven. You know what? I'm gonna come to the Staples Center. I'm not seeing the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq. Okay, this is, this is like the championship Lakers. So now I'm gonna get there at three o'clock. I wanna make sure I make 400 million shots before I go back into the room and then I say this on a delay for them. Who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down. And of course, I still hear the ball bounce. I went down, I'm like, this guy is, this guy's like, oh, working out. Who he was working out. Like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got there. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant, <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves, you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes and I'm like, oh, this guy's on this face. That's good. I better watch. You know, 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay. I think that's it enough. Just go play, you know? Come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 minutes. Okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. I, I, I have to understand, like, why. Why he, he works like that? Right. So after the games, I'm like, hey, oh, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. <laughs> and I, I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. Hmm. So why, why did I use this, and why, how can we tie this into real estate? Because it, it totally aligns with everything we're talking about today. Listing appointments require preparation. They require practice, and it requires working harder than the next Kobe, than the next realtor that they're interviewing. You've got to be prepping for your listing appointments and working harder, okay? Discipline is the key to building anything. So stop depending on the motivation and start growing with your self-discipline. This is on your last page in your book. Know where your weaknesses are, guys. If you're not good at listing appointments, get an accountability partner and, um, you know, Call me up, call somebody in the office up. If you don't know anyone, call Mike or Danielle, they'll hook you up with someone. But you gotta train your brain, they say, okay? It's kinda like working out. Those of you that work out or yoga, if you do work out, you train your muscles, you get bigger, stronger. Muscle memory is a strength training memory, okay? You've got to practice, okay? You gotta create a plan and follow it. You gotta know your goals every day. If someone asks me today, Colleen, how much do you have to do to reach your $21 million? I know what it is. I look at it every day, and do I have my affirmations and if you ever took bold, uh, I think it was two years ago maybe, they said to uh, hang your goal up, print out your goal and hang it on your bathroom mirror. My little Amish girl probably thinks I'm crazy because I have it hanging on my bathroom mirror. Um, I have my goal up there and I have my affirmations. So I'm doing my hair and brushing my teeth and makeup in the morning and I look at that and it review. And I love when my kids come in and they use my bathroom. Um, they know that mom has goals and I work with them on their goals. Education is the most important thing to me for my kids and I wanna make sure that um, uh, I am helping them attain their goals. Um, but I like that they see that their mom has goals. You know, my son Dan had a, a speech at US uh, the other day and he ran for student government and he said, my mom is is one of my role models because she has goals. I mean, they, yes, I cry. I was really good. <laughs> but most guys think they're bad. It's good, right? But I was like, That's, it's the baby in the house, right? Everyone loves the baby. Um, you got 72 working days left in this year, guys. Okay, Christmas is on Saturday for those of you who celebrate Christmas. Um, you take out all the weekends. Okay, I know we work weekends, but we're talking Monday through Friday when we have title and bank open. 72 days. What in those 72 days is left for you to do for you to attain your goal? Okay, you got to get rid of temptations and distractions. We all have them. We're scrolling, you're probably scrolling while you're sitting here through Facebook, Instagram. We're all guilty of it. Or you wanted to binge watch something on Netflix this weekend or something. Uh, but as the bold law will say, if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. Do you wanna practice your listing presentation or do you wanna watch, you know, Billy and Sis relationship, five new episodes for those of you, I love Billy and Sis. Uh, last night, so um, I was guilty, I did watch one. But anyway, I got my work done before I watched it. So um, the point is, stop procrastinating. Wherever your weakness is, harness it, find the inner strength, and, and you wanna get better at it. Okay, because listings are the name of the game. Keep your habits consistent. All right, you know, wake up at the same time every day. Maybe you wake up 6, 6.30, work out, 6.37, you're journaling, uh, kind of meditating, 
you know, um, reading a book. I'm a reader, I'm not really a writer, but um, you know, 7, 7.30, you're getting the kids off to school. If you don't have kids, maybe it's your coffee breakfast time. Shower and you're off to work at the um, same time. Make sure you're looking at your calendar the night before. I mean, this is all setting you up for success. What does your day tomorrow look like? You shouldn't be looking at it in the morning, you should be looking at it the night before you go to bed. And if it didn't happen today, you keep moving into the next day. So you get so annoyed, you flip and get rid of it, okay? <laughs> okay, because we're all guilty of it. And reward yourself for some achievement. Mike, you said on Thursday that his productivity coach, I went to his talk on um, uh, what's your why, and his productivity coach made him go get a piece of cheesecake and uh, eat it, he said, and ha take a picture and send it to him, okay? And I was like, wow, that's... I mean, just something small. Reward yourself. Go get your nails done. Go, go. I mean, I don't know. Go out to dinner for something. But you got to pay attention to the little things. Um, there's a, um, there's people in your life that have had effect on you, whether it be mentors. Um, and you got to be thankful your mentors, your colleagues, your family for where they've gotten you are today. Okay. There's so much more. I'm going to read this little um, excerpt that actually came across my phone this morning. Yes, I was scrolling. Uh, but there was a friend of a friend of mine, his friend that died. And when we talk about this, the people in your life that matter, that have gotten to where you are today, whether it be personal or professional, okay? So this is a good friend of hers that passed away. So this is a little moving though. I don't know how heaven chooses who stays and who goes, but I have this idea that life is a sparkler. Once ignited, our individual sparks are expelled and burst into life. Some sparks leave long, wondrous, cascading trails. Some emit no flame. Some make loud, prominent puffs. And some shower down, burning the skin. And others have a light that fizzles out far too soon. Whatever life is in this moment, I am fully aware and present. What is the lesson? Don't just tell those that matter, show them. Make them a priority. Love them, be present, create memories, and most importantly, have courage and no regrets. Because life can change in an instant and you can never get that time back that you lost. So you guys, you've got to be thankful and to those that matter in your life, but you've got to be courageous and take the next leap forward, okay? Forgive yourself and learn from your mistakes. If Debbie Garson, if I lost out on a, a listing presentation of Debbie Garson, that's how I said, you know what? Debbie Garson just had a better marketing uh, plan than you. Then I know that. Sorry, Debbie. I got it. Just you, Kelly. <laughs> then I know I have to step up my game to uh, my marketing plan. You know, maybe I'm going to call Debbie and say, Debbie, can I just sit in on your marketing plan? And you know, like, Debbie's not going to say no. No one says no around here. This is what the greatest thing is. People just want to help you get better. Okay. Or if you just want to just be better and maybe you don't feel comfortable asking Debbie, but you ask another top agent here or another a colleague, okay? And you guys, you're going to fail at listings. It's the only way you're going to get better. Because like I said earlier before, because I'm on a roll here, sorry. Um, if you don't fail, you got, or excuse me, you have to fail to be successful, okay? So you got to get back up and do it again and again and again, okay? There's the roughly 30 of us in this room, okay? Today is Monday. We have six more days left in this work week. If we all got one listing this week, challenge yourself, one listing, we would add a small, small win. 36 listings is a big win for the Market Center. I think Mike might have me up here every month, uh, Monday morning feature, <laughs> okay? You just added 36 listings to the Market Center, okay? So challenge yourself. Set your goals up, put them in your bath, go home tonight and type up your goal and, and your affirmations and hang them in your bathroom mirror. Get them in front of your face. And the last thing I will say after your listing presentation is to send a written hand thank you note. Don't send an email, don't send a text. Get a stationery out, get a pen. Okay, we're talking old school here. Write a thank you note, put it in the mail, not a label, with handwritten and a stamp. You know what that means to receive a thank you note at home from someone, okay? It's just common courtesy. There we go. All right, Debbie, can you read that? Yes. An arrow can only be shot by pulling it backward. When life is dragging you back with difficult, well, when life is dragging you back with difficulties, it means it's going to launch you into something great. So just focus and keep aiming. Keep aiming, guys. You can do it. 100%. If I can do this, you can do it. All right. 
that's the conclusion. I want to give two shout outs though real quick. On December 2nd, there is a staking class that's going to be offered to the Market Center that Danielle and the leadership team will put out. Um, if you have no idea what the heck we were doing walking around or no idea how to prep a house, this class will help you, okay? I have the designation, it's called the PPS, the Professional, Professional Property Staging Certification, okay? They will help you. I don't know if they're doing it now, but I got a whole palette of a Sherwin-Williams paint collection and you can suggest, talk to um, interior designers. You'll know what the in colors are and the neutral colors to, um, to offer to sellers, but it's a value proposition. I feel some people are anti-designations. I feel if you continue to educate yourself, you're staying abreast of market trends is a value proposition you offer to the seller. Staging didn't exist in 2004 when I got my license. Right. Didn't even exist. It is very popular now. Okay, you gotta know what the trends are and you gotta stay up. Okay, and Liz is our transaction coordinator. Liz will be at the 9.30 meeting this Tuesday after the seven lights, whatever he had says, and Liz, or she's leading, whatever. Um, Liz has been with me for two months now, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, it's very hard for me to let go, I'm a control freak. That one out yet. And it was very hard for me to let go uh, with some of my transactions for her to take over from the bank and title, but she's been amazing. And Liz, if you want to say something about that. input listings for you but on a listing end pictures supplements um, to write a description for a fee um, all the basic criteria and then of course when you get the offer it's contract to close um, you don't have to reach out to the bank or title she'll take care of it for you it's really nice did you go to the game yesterday <laughs> she has season tickets to the browns season tickets right and she's a licensed real estate agent add a bonus Okay, and then lastly, just my contact information, my phone, email, um, which you can find me in the MLS running roles here at the Market Center. Um, if you have any questions or just want to reach out and don't feel comfortable talking in a room full of all of us, and you know, I'd be more than happy to help. Does anyone have any questions what I talked about? We are on point, hour and a half. You were excellent. Only an hour and five minutes short. Thank you.